In this video, I want to talk about writing equilibrium expressions. This is always go usually going to be the first step in um, solving an equilibrium problem. You've got to write out, you know, a balanced chemical equation, and then you've ge generally at one of the, one of the steps write out the equilibrium expression, and then go ahead from there do maybe an ice table calculating mixture concentration or calculate the equilibrium. Uh, constant. So this is step one of many steps as we'll see in the future videos. Now uh, as you saw in my demonstration uh, the equilibrium is when the forward rates are equal to the reverse rates and it's very important to realize that concentrations are not equal. If all the concentrations were equal at equilibrium the equilibrium constant would be equal to one and there would be no need for this video or even the concept of equilibrium because the constant would always be one there would always there would be no chemical reactions and they would always be just a mixture equal mixture of things okay. Um, you can take a look at this graph if you want and pause the video, but this is from the OpenStax textbook. All right, so the equilibrium expression is basically equal to the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. And now they depend on the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. I usually give my students a balanced chemical um, equation. Sometimes I forget. Uh, check to make sure the equation is balanced, okay? and um, they do not depend on solids and liquids, okay? So look for aqueous things or gaseous things, and those are the reactants from products you want to be in the equilibrium expression. It's not solids and liquids. Some detail about why solids and why liquids are not involved in the equilibrium expression is outlined a little bit in the OpenStax uh, textbook, but I'll skip that concept here. I'll just skip to what you need to remember. All right, so if you have a chemical reaction, A plus B going to C plus D, you want to uh, write down the concentrations of C and D, which are products, over concentrations of A and B, which are reactants, okay? And you want to use the coefficients as powers now for each and every single reactant and product. Now here they're all gases, so they all enter into the equilibrium expression, all right? And um, again, take a look at the OpenStax textbook for more, you know, written detail and filling in the blanks, filling in some of the missing details that I'm not going over in great detail, okay? So let's just show you what you need to know how to do. So here's um, an equilibrium expression. We've got methanol and as a gas reacting with platinum, which is a solid, producing hydrogen and formaldehyde. These two products are both gases. And the equation is balanced here, okay? Four oxygens, I mean, four hydrogens, one oxygen, and one carbon, okay? So first of all, the equilibrium expression, K means equilibrium, and EQ stands for equilibrium, right? So it's products over reactants. Hydrogen is one of the products, um, and it's just a coefficient of one. And formaldehyde is one of the products, and it's just a coefficient of one. And uh, methanol is a reactant, so that's in the bottom of the fraction, and has a coefficient of one, so we don't need to show the first power there. And what about platinum? Platinum is a solid. And remember, we don't put solids or liquids in the equilibrium expressions. Let's look at example number two. Let's write an equilibrium expression for this uh, sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. All right, so again, it's products over reactants. Products are on the right side, so we've got SO3, okay, in brackets, that's how we abbreviate concentration in moles per liter. Now we need to put a squared term there because we have a two as a coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. Our reactant is gonna be SO2, right? And there's also a two term here as well because of the balanced chemical equation. So we wanna square that concentration. And we have oxygen and it's just to the first power. We don't show the ones in chemistry. We're not gonna show oxygen raised to the first power because that simplifies just to oxygen, okay? Now what about this? So uh, here's a picture of somebody holding um, some powder that they've uh, cut out of an oxygen absorbing packet that they found in a beef jerky um, you know, product. And this is designed to absorb oxygen so uh, oxygen will not react with the fats or oils in an auto oxidation process uh, to give you some off tasting um, oxidized uh, lipids or fats in the beef jerky. And so it keep, maintains the freshness. And this is how it works. Oxygen um, will react with iron. And there's some other um, things in there, maybe s some activated carbon or some salt, something like that, that will cause this reaction to occur a little bit faster. 
um, I'm not showing the catalysts in this uh, balanced chemical equation, but you form rust, okay? Iron three oxide. All right, so let's go ahead and write the equilibrium expression for this. Now, again, if you have any solids, just replace them by one if it's confusing, and I'll show you why it might be confusing here, okay? So again, we have products over reactants. We have iron three oxide, which is a solid, okay? It's a solid, so we don't include that into the equilibrium expression. And some students just leave it off, but you actually need the fraction bar there. So what do you put above the fraction bar to create a fraction? Well, you just put one there, okay? And we, of course, don't square the one. Um, don't do something silly like that, okay? Now, for the reactants, we've got oxygen, and we raise that to a third power because there's a three in the balanced chemical equation. And if you're ever confused about what to do with solids, just replace it by one. And of course, we're not gonna take one and raise it to the fourth power be because that simplifies to one, okay? And now you can simplify this fraction a little bit and you can write one over oxygen cubed, okay? So that is the equilibrium expression for these oxygen absorbers. You could use this equation to calculate the partial pressures of oxygen or how much oxygen would be left over in, in a sealed container of beef uh, jerky, for example. All right, so how do you calculate K? Now, we're gonna plug in some numbers and stuff like that. Um, I call the equilibrium constant KEQ, or I call the equilibrium constant KP. P is just calculated from the pressures. You just plug whatever pressures the uh, word problem gives you into uh, the concentrations and you get a value, and I just call that equilibrium constant. Uh, KC is technically calculated from the molarity. Uh, we always use molarity for the concentration. We don't use any other units. And if you're given molarity of this and molarity of that, you just plug them into the equilibrium expression and you just calculate a value. That's the equilibrium constant, okay? So KP is KC is KEQ. It's the same thing in my class. Now, technically in the OpenStax textbook and other advanced textbooks, you do have this formula to convert from KC to KP and vice versa, but I don't do this in my class. I skip it, okay? But here it is. If you would like to read more, check the link um, below in the description to get a link to OpenStax uh, chemistry textbook. All right, so here's practice for you. Uh, write equilibrium expressions for the following reactions, okay? You might wanna pause this video and write a couple of these down and see if you can come up with equilibrium um, expressions. Do not include solids or liquids in the equilibrium expression. Watch out for the coefficients and make sure that it's products on top and reactants on the bottom of that fraction. All right, let's go through some examples now of how to calculate the Kp. Now again, P just stands for pressure, but it's just the equilibrium constant. So what you need to do first is uh, write down the expression for the equilibrium constant. So uh, Kp is products over reactants, okay? So we got bromine, we got nitrogen oxide squared because we have a two in the balanced chemical equation and we have this thing called NOBR, which is also squared, okay? And then what you do is you uh, just take the pressures and you uh, plug them all in there, okay? And the wonderful thing about equilibrium constants is that they have no units. I repeat that, they have no units. In my class, usually I say every number should have a unit afterwards. Well, guess what? For equilibrium constants, you're not gonna have a un unit after the equilibrium constant, so you just write down a number uh, on, the, on the page. It, it does bother me as well. All right, so 0 0.37 is what we get for this equilibrium constant provided uh, the pressures, and that's Kp or just Keq if you want to call it, okay? Let's do another one. So uh, calculate Kc. Technically, this is Kc. I should have wrote on the, on the slide here, but again, I just call them all Keq. So we've got hydrogen iodide gas in equilibrium with hydrogen gas and iodine gas. Iodine can exist as a solid, uh, but at some temperatures it can exist as a gas. So pretend like this is a gas phase reaction at elevated temperatures. So we got hydrogen equals iodine equals 0 0.0058 molar. That's a common notation you'll see in many word problems. And we've got HI concentration 0 0.0072 molar. So of course, write out your products over reactants and don't forget to use the two for the HI as a squared power term, okay? and then go ahead and plug in your concentrations into each of these. And when you do your uh, math on your calculator, make sure that you type 0 0.0072, and then you hit that little X squared uh, button on your calculator if, if, you, if you have one on your calculator. In other words, don't forget to square the actual number when you're calculating this, and it should be 0 0.65 when you do this on your calculator, okay? 
Now, sometimes we want to calculate the missing concentration, and we just use the same techniques here. We're just solving for something else, okay? So we have this chemical equilibrium. We're given some numbers. We're given Kp, so we're not trying to find Kp, and we're asked for N2 concentration, okay? So how do you do this? Well, the first thing you want to do is write out an expression for the uh, equilibrium constant, okay? So it's products over reactants. Notice how the NCl3 is squared, and notice how the chlorine is cubed, because the balanced chemical equation has a 2 and 3 respectively, okay? And then you plug in the atmospheres. Uh, I'm sorry. We want to do algebra to solve for N2. So uh, I didn't show the math steps there, but the nitrogen in brackets is going to be equal to all of that stuff, and you'll notice how Kp is in the denominator of this fraction. Okay, slow down, work it out for yourself if you're confused, and demonstrate to yourself, yes, this equation is okay here on the screen. Now what you want to do is go ahead and plug in all of the atmospheres into each of those, and keep in mind that uh, the Kp has no units, and so we just get all of this answer at the end, 0 0.42. But here, actually, we want to write down a unit. Uh, since we're calculating uh, pressures, we would expect this to be atmospheres, not molarity, right? and not just 0 0.42, which has no units. If we're actually calculating a nitrogen pressure, that's going to be 0 0.42 atmospheres. Why atmospheres? Because in the word problem, all the gases are given to us in atmospheres, okay? So in this case, you do want to write units um, for the equilibrium constant. You do not need to. You don't want to. You should not, all right? All right, so that's how you do this kind of a problem. Here's a practice problem for you. Uh, we've got this same chemical reaction I discussed earlier. We're given chlorine, NCl3, and Kp, and we want to know what is chlorine, okay? What is the pressure of chlorine? And I just gave you a little hint here. You will need to do a square root, okay? So find that square root on your calculator, and that's how you do this problem. Thanks for watching. I hope this gets you started in understanding the textbook more and doing additional practice problems to improve your mastery of this. Uh, please like, click, please give a, a thumbs up on this video, and have a great day, everybody.